So I'm really excited to be back at GEM. Um, I was actually involved in the bid to host the GEM Secretariat in Italy in 2008 and we were fortunate enough to win that bid. And so during the first five years of GEM, I was coordinating the global risk activities, then I was the Deputy Secretary General for two years. So I'm really honoured to be back and I'm really looking forward to leading GEM in its vision to 2030, a vision of a world that is not just resilient to earthquakes but to all natural hazards. If I think about what I think GEM can do in the next few years and where it can really make a difference. I think there's a few things. One is to go beyond ground shaking hazard. I think we need to work with other communities that are looking at other earthquake related hazards, landslides, tsunamis, liquefaction, and we need to include those in the global hazard and risk models. I think another area where GEM can make a difference is to um, expand its current data sets so that they are more of use for other natural hazards communities. One to data set that I can think of is the, the exposure model. We really need a hazard agnostic exposure model at the global level. A ha an exposure model that can be used by other natural hazards such as flood hazards that has the attributes that are needed for those other hazards and that it has the resolution. It might also make use of artificial intelligence, um, crowdsourcing. These are all scientific and technological issues and challenges that these different natural hazards communities are facing and I think we need to work together to address those, those issues. I, I would like to see GEM leading that way in, in bringing together this global natural hazards community ecosystem in addressing these, these, these issues which will help to reduce disaster risk. When it comes to international collaborations and partnerships, I think they're fundamental in any scientific domain, but especially if we think about this global natural hazards community that I mentioned, I think that needs to be built on such partnerships. If we look back at the uh, partnerships and, and international collaborations within seismology and earthquake engineering, we have a long history of working together. The, back in the 1990s, the GSHAP initiative led to the first seismic hazard model at the global scale. And um, also in earthquake engineering, since 1956, we've had world conferences in earthquake engineering every four years. Now I bring up the world conference because next year in Milan, we will be helping to host the, the world conference and GEM will play a key role in organising technical sessions, in presenting its work, uh, both the work of the GEM Secretariat, but also the whole GEM family from around the world. If we want GEM's global seismic hazard and risk models to have an impact on disaster risk reduction and on sustainable development, then we can't just stop here now that the models have been released. We need to start to use these models and show them and show them in, in applications of disaster risk reduction. GEM is already doing that. GEM is working with partners such as USGS to define seismic actions for design around the world. There's also efforts to show how by retrofitting and strengthening the buildings and including vulnerability models for those retrofitted buildings, we can reduce the losses and show this cost-benefit analysis. One thing that we're planning to do at GEM now with these new global hazard and risk models is to look at the environmental impact of earthquakes. So why do earthquakes have an environmental impact? Well, the damage caused by earthquakes leads to subsequent repair and reconstruction. And it's well known that the construction industry um, is a major contributor to global greenhouse gases, to raw material depletion and to waste production. So once we have a way of accounting for the, for the emissions caused by that additional construction that is caused by the damage from earthquakes, then we can also try and promote sustainable development and retrofitting the buildings using sustainable methods and show how that then leads to a reduction in emissions in, in global greenhouse emissions. So I think we just need to continue to think of ways, of innovative ways to use our models to promote disaster risk reduction in a sustainable way.